Hey everyone, this is Red Robot, and today we're just gonna have a little chat about CP Dust Bowl. And is CP Dust Bowl a bad map? Now, um, I've noticed people kind of criticize Dust Bowl really, really harshly, and quite a lot of the criticisms, well, they are valid. People say things like, um, Dust Bowl's just a bunch of spawn camping. It's totally true because most of the offensive exits only have one door that can just be sticky trapped. Uh, it's spammy. Also true, the, the routes to the point are often cramped and narrow. Uh, tons of choke points, um, lack of flank routes, focus on certain classes such as, um, NG and Demo Man. And shut down a lot by sentries, which is <laughs> also true. We've all seen the number of sentries on Dust Bowl last. Uh, there's a huge time to f win the game. Um, it can take ages and ages and ages before the defenders win. Uh, kind of lack of ways to outplay your enemies due to the fact that there aren't as many flank crews and not as many different ways to kind of get at uh, the enemy team. Also, the skyboxes are low, and the map seems kind of over reliant on uber pushes. And by that I mean like it sets up a kind of area where the only way to get in and take out the enemy team behind all their uh, stickies and sentries and heavies is to get an uber uh, and and some players I think get frustrated by that and so if all of those criticisms are valid uh, what could possibly make um, uh, Dust Bowl well, in my opinion not a bad map well I reckon Dust Bowl was created for a different TF2 and it's a completely different beast uh, back then to how it was now uh, just a few changes that would have made a difference in terms of Dust Bowl. Uh, uh, because NGs couldn't haul buildings and couldn't upgrade teleporters or dispensers, uh, they were way, way more reliant on metal packs. And um, remember back then, you couldn't even pick up ammo off, dro off dead players, so the only way to get it was through um, resupply and ammo packs on the map. So it made NGs like a whole lot, whole lot more weaker. They couldn't really get as rooted in as they are now. Um, if there, a whole bunch of NGs couldn't really sit up in the same way they can now without that reliable level 3 dispenser that'll be stealing metal from each other. Um, there was also no air blasts, so pushes that would usually have, have worked back in the day will often fail uh, in modern TF2 due to a par air blasting. Um, which means that which means that the match will often become kind of artificially extended by this this air blast which keeps denying ubers on both sides before the only way and the only way to combat an uber was with another uber so the game really revolved around picking the enemy's medics as you pushed up and slowly grinding your way back through spam and back through players uh, and getting advantage if you scored a pick with a scout or a sniper or a spy on the enemy medic for example there was also the sticky bomb launcher and this is probably one thing that <laughs> is a lot better in the game than it was back then. The sticky launcher was so much more powerful, had so much more ramp damage, you could easily one-shot classes. Like, you'd be seeing engineers getting one-shot behind their sentries by a sticky bomb, it was that crazy. Also, um, NG and Scout had a way more rapid-fire pistol, which meant that buildings at uh, longer and medium ranges would be get getting hassled a lot more by uh, the hitscan classes. Just another kind of nail in NG's coffin, it was really a lot harder to be an engineer back in the day, which meant that these kind of uh, NG build-ups on last didn't happen as much. And don't forget the fact that grenades could explode after b after bouncing, which means that <laughs> uh, players sitting around the corner from spam uh, would get hit for the full grenade damage sometimes, which is so insane. The grenades were so much stronger. Uh, Demon Man and just all up was a, such a beast, and the game really relied upon him. The matches would have been also been a lot slower paced without things like the Dead Ringer or Bonk Atomic Punch to cause some crazy back caps. Uh, you can't really cheese your enemies like you can now with the unlocks. You have to win pretty much legit. Uh, it's really hard. It would have been really hard to get behind enemies without those unlocks to help you. So it's potentially true that because of all of these changes to the game between now and then, um, the Dust Bowl has been kind of unfairly judged as being bad uh, when when the map has stayed the same, but the game itself has changed around it. Um, Dust Bowl's not all bad. The short sight lines make for kind of fairer fights versus things like snipers. Um, there's no crazy open areas that snipers become like pretty much <laughs> gods behind on maps like uh, let's say Swiftwater, let's say Upward. There are intricate things to learn about Dust Bowl, but they're not quite as blatant as some other maps. They're just little little jumps you can do here and there to gain that you get access to different areas of certain classes. It's um there's certainly a lot to see and a lot to know. And it will make a big difference if you know it or not. The map knowledge on Dust Bowl is important. 
but it doesn't seem as big of a deal as other maps because the little things you can do are so minor. It's a great map for beginners. Um, it's because it's so narrow and because it's so spammy, it, it funnels new players all in one little choke. And um, <laughs> even the even the beginner with the worst aim ever can still grab a few kills or so if they just spam down the hallways with a rocket launcher or with a sticky bomb launcher. Although the rounds do last a very long time and it can feel, feel kind of really drawn out and stalemate -y. because the points cap so quickly it does cause that really really high moment of tension and excitement when the points just about to be capped and, the play and a player just seems to breathe on the point for it to be a win. The stages also may be really simple and loud but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's not a lot to learn and a lot to see because it's a multi-stage map you've got a whole lot of content to get through in one sitting and there's a whole lot of stuff you can do <laughs> really fun stuff as well. So in conclusion TF2 has changed, not Dust Bowl. We come to expect to kind of have a different type of gameplay. Uh, new mechanics and weapons often don't mesh well with old maps. Players are used to the luxury of multiple flank routes in big open areas, whereas Dust Bowl really punishes a bad decision because you're stuck in a, in a tiny hallway or in a tiny little choke point. Uh, and players nowadays aren't used to the heavy reliance on uber charges in order to do anything. Uh, we've gotten kind of uh, accustomed to being able to cheese our way into taking out sentries with let's say the direct hit or uh, using the conqueror instead of having a medic. Lol Dust Bowl might not be everyone's cup of tea and it might not be the uh, highest end of play you'll find in a TF2 server. I think it still has its place in the TF2, the TF2 world and in the community. And it's certainly not a map that I would consider to be blatantly bad. And there you have it. Send your hate mail to me in the comments below. And I'll catch you guys next time.